Hi guys, how are you? You are. Uh, I'm so glad to see you here again in this uh, with a new tutorial about the voice over IP technology. So today we are going to talk about COCM and how to configure it between two CIPC softwares remotely. Um, we have four topics today. We are four steps, four points, four main points we are going to talk about, as you see here. Sorry, just to make distance for our points. Yes. So the first one we are going to take talk about how CIPC Cisco IP communicator connects with each others and how COCM deal with gateway. So the second one, we are going to, to talk about how COCM handles their number, of course, remotely and locally. The third point, we are going to talk about the hierarchy model of COCM, of course, for Cisco. The, the fourth point, we, will, we, are, we are going to talk about how to make 2002 and 5010 extensions to be able to call with each other as you see here in the scenario this is to be honest with you this is may yes maybe it will be uh, maybe it would be the real scenario in the field so let's suppose that we have a headquarter office here maybe it is in a different location and we have here CME branch the headquarters they are they used the COCM for this for their IP phone communication, but here's they use the CME for their CIPC or for yes uh, for Cisco IP communicator or soft phones. So they want to communicate with between each others each other through COCM and CME, of course through H323 protocol gateway we don't want we don't want to use a SIP protocol or or MGCP protocol here is just we are going to focus to concentrate on H323 gateway protocol we are going to know how we are going to configure it here in COCM and in CME branch uh, before I started just we are going to talk a little bit about the theory yes topics the first point here we are going to to know how C IPC or IP phones communicate with each others and how COCM deal with this gateway so let's uh, see here so go back to the snap tools so thank you Microsoft to give us this snapping tool at least because I don't have uh, a pen electronic pen to make a good explanation but don't worry about my fonts today it will be something strange because I'm writing with mouse so no problem with that so before we I started to explain how two IP phones want to communicate with each other we are going to talk about something a gateway a gateways for COCM the gateways in general provide a number of methods for connectivity and IP telephony network to the PSTN or legacy PBX or even between a LAN uh, sorry a one cloud so suppose here's we have just a cloud here maybe it could be a PSTN Or maybe this gateway it's connects also with another gateway which is for maybe one for internet so the gateway here here is the gateway the gateway it's provide a number of methods to connectivity the IP telephony here with cloud of PSTN or PBX or either it's a one 
so the gateway here this is GW which is mean for gateway it has two types of Cisco access gateway we have two types of Cisco access gateway type 1 and type 2 the type 1 it's called analog gateway this is the analog gateway the first one is analog gateway and the second one it will be the digital trunk gateway so here is digital yes trunk gateways so we have analog gateways and digital trunk gateways what is what are the difference between them the first one the analog gateways it has two types it has something called access analog station gateways connect CUCM yes connect CUCM to pots which call which is stand for plain old telephony service so I have the first one is uh, it's called access analog station connect the CUCM with something called pots or something called IVR which stand for interactive voice response so the first of analog gateway it's connect the CUCM with pots or IVR or maybe it could be also with a fax machine also so and so on the second one of analog gateway its access analog trunk gateways connect the CUCM to the PSTN so the second one it's connect the CUCM with PSTN sorry about the font also. or PBX through trunks yes the second type of gateways it calls digital trunk gateways this is connect CUCM to the PSTN or PBX via digital trunks such as something called PRI which is a primary rate interface or BRI which is basic rate interface or BRI which is basic rate interface or either a T1 channel a T1 uh, channel yes here is in our scenario we are going to use a T1 or serial link because we don't yes I can't use a PRI or BRI in Genesis 3 so here is I want just to make a T1 channel which is called the serial link so this is uh, just in common about the gateway yes devices so now let's uh, talk about now the mechanism of how two IP phones when two IP phones wants to call with each other what will happen let's suppose this is the IP phone number one and this is the IP phone number two I want to change the color to the red so before we started just you want to know there is a three types of protocol yes it's very necessary to make a calling between phone one and phone two I have or I want something called skinny protocol which is SCCP protocol which is S C C P protocol and I also I have something called the RTP protocol which is real-time protocol which is for voice over IP I want to write it in red which is the R T P and the last one it is called the H323 this is our protocol today H323 
three of course dot two three virgin two so now I have this protocol this is one and two and three so the first one if the IP phone number one here wants to communicate or wishes to transfer the calling to the phone to the IP phone two here what will happen IP phone one will make a transfer request to the CUCM through something called SCCP protocol this is the IP phone one will start to send a skinny protocol yes this is in red and this is skinny protocol to the CUCM yes the second one when CUCM receive this skinny protocol from IP phone one translate this request into H323 to the Cisco IOS gateway so here is blue after that CUCM will send as 323 gateway or protocol to the Cisco IOS gateway here yes and will open a session ID which is now the third step the Cisco IOS gateway will close the RTP channel to the IP phone one so now here is the Cisco IOS will close the RTP session here yes will close the RTP session between CUCM between sorry the Cisco IOS gateway and this this IP phone number one the fourth step here the CUCM issues a request to IP phone 2 here is CUCM will send also uh, a skinny protocol yes the fourth step here will send also a skinny protocol which is in red CUCM will send a skinny protocol to the IP phone number two here so we'll choose a skinny protocol to IP phone number two and the RTP connection will set up to the Cisco IOS and also the RTP connection between phone two and Cisco IOS communicator will begin and uh, the fifth step after Cisco IOS gateway acknowledge the request the RTB voice it is the black the RTB voice will open between Cisco IOS and IP phone 2 so the RTB voice barrier channel is established between now between IP phone 1 and IP phone 2 and now they are they can make a calling between each other so this is simply about the mechanism of calling between two IP phones with the same cluster yes so we talked about we have two kind of access gateway Cisco access gateway we have analog gateways and digital trunk gateways the analog gateways it's connect the CUCM to the pots or IVR and or through PSTN through digital PSTN uh, sorry through di th with PSTN um, analog trunk gateway connect CUCM with PSTN or PBX and the second type of gateways here is digital trunk gateways connect the CUCM uh, with PSTN or PBX or either one through PRI or BRI or T1 channels so and we have three kind of protocol skinny protocol real-time protocol and H323 version 2 protocol this uh, these three protocol we wanted to make a connection between the IP phones inside the same cluster here so let's go back to our points here so now we finished the first one now the second one we want to know how CUCM handles dial number so we want to make a new
yes and new snare new snap so now now we are going to explain how CUCM handles disable uh, handles dial number so let's suppose now this is Cisco IP phone communicator wants to communicate with this extension number and maybe this extension number wants to communicate with this so to answer this question how CUCM handles their number we have to answer two questions the first one is what CUCM knows about this is what CUCM knows about and what you must configure inside the CUCM to make a connection so the first one, what CUCM knows about? CUCM here knows about this IP phone and this IP phone. Why? Because they are in the same cluster. So, isn't it? Yes, because in the same cluster, they don't need to make any extra configuration inside CUCM to make them call with each other. But if maybe either this IP phone or this IP phone wants to communicate with outside Cisco IP communicator here is we need to configure something called a dial plan number inside the CUCM to make able this inside Cisco IP phones to make connect with the outside so the problem here is outside not inside so this is the concept here now we are going to talk about the hierarchy model of for CUCM. So to understand this scenario, we are going to talk about something called So now let's talk about the hierarchy model of for CUCM. We are going to go there. Just I want just to make a, a new snapping here, yes, and uh, here is it, like this, yes, so now I can break. So now this is, we are starting with route pattern here, and the route pattern it's reach the, there is a route list, and route list to the route two of route group here is route group one and route group two. So this is the hierarchy here, and let's talk about just a little bit about this hierarchy here. And this is two. We are have two devices in each group here. So be careful about the logic flow. In this hierarchy it will be from top to down so the logical flow from top to down from route pattern to the device this is the logical when make yes a calling but if you want to make a configuration you should start from the bottom from the bottom to the up from devices to the route pattern this is the concept of hierarchy so the route pattern here let's suppose here we have I want just to draw this scenario here I want to use black here let's suppose here we have a router here this router and we have here is another router this router is a gateway connect with with one and this connect with PSTN so that's it and let's suppose here is in our cluster here there is something called here is our cluster 2x x x 
and here is they are connected with another cluster with one x x x sorry about the x but this is what i can here is one x and x if this cluster 2xxx wants to communicate with 1xxx how could that happen the first thing here is i should add the destination button here it's 1x x and x if you want to reach to this fourth digit start with one they will go yes to this route list then here is i have two route lists the first one it's for the h323 gateway and for also the pstn gateway so here is i have two list and to understand the route list you have to understand the route group and if you want to understand the route group you have to understand the devices so this is because we are going to start from devices then we are going to go to the up to the route list let's start from the device here is devices which means that router it could be 2000 like this this is 2800 and one this is a voice router or it could be 2000 and 2600 and one this is a, another kind of router 600 20 one like this and um, so two of these devices they are let's suppose here we have another router here this is for 2610 like this connect with one so for more redundancy to make more redundancy so and here is the routing group i have two routing groups here the routing group here is for the one and the second one it's for the pstn Is that clear it's for extra list yes so that's good so where is the end here okay then so one here's like this so let's suppose if router if this 2xxx wants to communicate with 1xxx it will go to the route list then it will choose i have two route list here route list one or the route list two the route list one it's for the one and the two it's for the pstn so it will choose the first one the first one it will go to the one and go to this gateway and go to the one xx but let's suppose that two of this router maybe suddenly they go down so the logical step it will be like this I want to go to the one XXX so I have a pattern then go to the route list I have the last list number one because I choose from top to down so this is the first the first one it will go there and hops two of the two of devices they are down so what can I do so go back and tell him that I can't go or I can't reach to the one XX so it will go to the PSTN and use one of these devices and go there to the one XXX which is here so this is the concept of this is the hierarchy yeah, yeah Cisco it gives you a chance to yes to leave this route list and this routing group and you can attach between route pattern and devices directly but this is it's not good to do it because if your company uh, grow in the future and um, uh, also you have a redundant link if this routing group or this device fails you have to choice another 
yes link to the PSTN or to the one so this is a very good important to use route list and route group which is complete hierarchy for you and to give you a chance in the future to be in more yes to be there is a redundant safe links in the future so this is what about it is we talked about the hierarchy now so the fourth step here we are going now to make yes 2002 here it is just I want to delete that I don't want it so yes I want this Cisco IP communicator communicate with this Cisco IP communicator with XP so the first thing we are going to make just I did the pre-requested configuration like a physical I yes like IP addresses for each physical interface here I have fast Ethernet 00, 0 connect with this and serial 10 connect with CUCM headquarter here is I did the pre-requested configuration uh, to, yes to be clear here or to know that I don't want to change or to add anything here in this router CUCM headquarter just all my commands I want to use it in this voice router and in CUCM in this router I don't want to use it or to add anything so let's first uh, yes to uh, make a CME router to give the extension 5010 to this IP so to this Cisco IP communicator so go inside it yes I changed the console color yes to be clear here now so now enable here now show IP root so show IP interface brief because this is down just I want to make it up start like this to see it look at this here is I have 192.168.20.1 this is the IP address fast Ethernet 00, 0 and 172.16.1.2 for this serial so now show IP root here I didn't see anything yet so it's just now it's up yes now it's up and I can see the default gateway here is I use the default gateway with this next top so now I want just to make show run I want to make sure if I have anything here so what is that so yes because it works yes mm, what's that's done so now let's uh, see now we yeah. are ready now enable we are going to configure the CME router here to give the extension number 5010 to this CIPC with an XP windows so telephony service I want to make it set up now yes the Cisco IP iOS telephony service the IP source address will be this 192.168.20.1 so 192.168.20.1 now skinny port is like this how many IP phone just one yes zero zero the extension number 5010 now you want to follow voicemail not yet and no so now we are going to VMware to the XP and make it works Cisco IP communicator now it should be take the 5010 look at that I connect with this Cisco IP communicator with this yes with VMnet one yes with vmnet one vmnet one here 
if you go there I want to show you here where is that okay here is the vmnet one look at this this is a vmnet one and the IP address it will be 192.168.20.60 and the gateway is 20.1 and also I changed the TFTB server, the IB address of TFTB server inside the SkyB communicator, so it's ready. So now just you want to be patient just to, to take the IB address. Through working that a lot. Also here I connect this Cisco IP communicator with loopback interface. Yes, with, loop, with loopback interface and the loopback interface it takes the IB address. I want to show you here. Yes. Here is it. The IP address is one nine two one six eight dot ten dot five, and the default gateway is ten dot two. So I think that's good. Now, if you go there, now you should see. Now it registered. That's good. Now it has registered. Now show e form down sell down so why let's go back there yes it's still working it's finished I'll just I want to make sure can I make ping to one nine two and eight uh, ten dot eleven can I go there yes can go to the can reach to this to the CUCM so that's good now it's working that's what it takes 5010 this is my extension so we configure the cme branch here now we are going to configure the h323 gateway inside the cocm uh, but before that the gateway it will be this router so the h323 gateway it will be the cme branch here is my gateway and this is the IP address, it will be the gateway 192.168.20.1. So go to the it is simply to under to get inside the CUCM just like this. Hit the enter of the CUCM like this, and it will open this windows. Click on this, and we you will open this window. So that's easy. But before that, I want to go to this navigation, Cisco Unified Operating System Administration. I want to show you the IB address and the gateway. How can we configure it? So, creative here. Yes. Now, uh, the Ethernet here. So it takes time, no problem. So DHCP is disabled. The host name is admin. The IP address 192.168.10.11. The submit mask is 24. 192.168.10.2. So this is, this is the IP address. This is the gateway. So that's good. Now I want to go to the service ability here. We want to, uh, to enable that. To know how to enable the Cisco TFTB server and Cisco call manager. Let's go now service activation. I activated the Cisco TFTB server and Cisco call manager before that, but I want to show you how, how you configure that see it cisco call manager is now is activated and tftb is activated also this is the most too important service name i wanted now also i have to go to the control center feature services 
to know the status is running or not running so it started that's good here is our Cisco call manager started and started and there is activated and activated start time at this time the uptime is like one hour and something 11 minutes so that's good now go back to the Cisco Unified CM so the first thing we are going to to verify the system menu here the first thing we are going to server I want to show you just click and find look at this I have here is the host name and IP address here is you have to change the name of this the IP address of the Cisco IP communicator with this 192.168.10.11 this is a very important to know and there is you can add the description also you have to know to go to the enterprise parameter here takes a time maybe yes so here is also change the admin name with this IB address I changed it before just to save a time just I want to show you how how to change change it so this is change instead of name so 192.168.10.11 this is the IP address of CUCM so now now go to the Cisco Unified Communication Manager here find I have CM admin this is the default one I want to click on it just I want to show you here this is the IP address Cisco, Uni Cisco Unified Communication Manager server this is and this is the name this is the description here is it look at this here is something called auto registration disable on this Cisco Unified Communication Manager if you click on this you don't you cannot change this start directory number and ending directory number and the IP phone it will not take the IP until you configure it manually so I don't want it I do I want to make it auto registration so I don't just this disable it like this and the range here is from 2000 okay to the 2000 and 10 so here is also the parts of SIP protocol and GCB protocol. So click on save. That's good. And Cisco Unified Communication Manager Group. Find. Click on default. So now here is I have the name is default. The name is default and the auto registration here Cisco Unified Communication Manager this is also very important because I want the Cisco IP Communicator Manager Cisco IP Communicator to take the extension number automatically and also here is selected Cisco Unified Communication I have one here's if you have another CUCM like a subscribers or another subscribers you will see it here so now just that's all the last one is device pool here i want to show you device pool i have many devices but what i want to use it here in this scenario this one which is called default and the default one is to choose the time is cm local and this is unified communication manager is default just like this so let's go now to add a new device or a new phone to our scenario you have if you open the Cisco IP communicator just like this enable it and I want to take the device name if you go there and add a new one here is I can choose Cisco IP communicator next 
here is I want to choose this skinny protocol next here is I need now something called I want to show you the device name and the device name I can take it from here is the device name of my this is one so this is the device name of the Cisco IP communicator and uh, here is the device board I want to choose the default one the phone button Cisco standard and the last thing I want to choose the security device security Cisco IP communicator so now just click on save okay Should they wait just take a time? Yes, now I added a new one here. Just I want to here is line one add. I want to add the directory number manually. I want to choose two thousand and two and click on save save so that's good now i want to make a reset reset to reset the ip communicator now it takes the extension 2002 so that's good So now I added the new one, I added the, my phone device. If you go there, you will see it now, find. Now I have, yes, this is device name and it's registered with 991.68.10.11. And this is the IP address of Cisco IP communicator, which is in Windows XP, here is it. So that's good. So we configured the Cisco IP communicators in XP and in Windows 7. Now we are going to make this Cisco IP communicator can be reached to this Cisco IP communicator in Windows 7. So now go to the CUCM and I want to add here is something called, if you remember the hierarchy here, I said we are going to to start from button to up which is I start from device and the device is here this is the gateway device go there let's suppose now I want just click find I don't see anyone here is I have just one gateway you can see you can use another gateway if you have a PST and a cloud you can use another uh, gateway for PSTN but here's because I have just in my scenario one gateway I choose just one gateway for one but yes to show you how to configure the route list and the route group I want to add you here in CUCM but it will not work PSTN it will not work but it will work with one devices so just add new here and I have H323 gateway next the device name here it's uh, if you remember here the default gateway the gateway it will be this so the 192.168.20.1 it will be the H323 gateway so this is the device name it's the IP address 192.168.20.1 device pool it's by default Classification, like, let it use system default. No problem about that. I think that's it. So now click on save. This is the device protocol. It's H2, H225. So this is the protocol. And this is the product, H323 gateway. So now click on save. Okay. I want to make a reset just to make it ready to work that's good now 
go to the gateway I have one gateway yes and I want to choose another gateway add a new one look at this if you go inside there if you want to add another devices at the same one for h323 gateway you can add it but here is just I want to add just two device one for one and the next then second one it for PSTN so this is it will be for PSTN the device name let's suppose just another IP address 192 192.168.30.1 just description here just is just this is for uh, PSTN gateway like this device pool is default but it will not work but I want to show you how to add it just to be clear for you so now just save okay now just make a reset but it will not work but just I want to show you the steps here like this go back to the gateway Look at this here is I have it works 192.168.20.1 because it exists so the status is unknown don't worry about that it is by default it will it will yes you will see it's unknown state but it will works but here's I don't see the IP address because it's not exist in the real time so it is the first one just I want to change the description here I forget description the description here it's for one so now save okay make a reset reset close now go back now I have a one and PSTN so this is the devices I added just one device here is one device for one and one device for PSTN One device for one and one device for PSTN so now we are going to step to the routing group now we are going to call routing menu here route hunt here look at this I want to first routing group then I want to configure route list last thing I want to configure the route pattern so this is the hierarchy of Cisco for CUCM so now I go to the routing group and click find I don't see anyone so add a new one look at this I have the routing group name here is I want to choose just one devices okay look at this here is I see available devices this is 192.168.20.1 this is the default gateway for one and this is the default gateway for PSTN. If you want to add just another devices here, just to show you. if you want to add another devices to make a full connectivity, a full redundancy, sorry, a full redundancy uh, between two devices in the same routing group, you can do this, but it will cost you so much. So you have to add just one device. So this is my device, this is for routing group, and I can add this add to the routing group here and if you have another one you can just add like this look at this here is something called distribution algorithm this is circular or top and down I want to choose top and down what does that mean that mean here is just go back here if you look at this if you are if you have two devices here just if you have a circular and you have a load balancing and all and both of them they have the equal load balancing the circular it will be like this it will choose to this one and go back to this one and go back to this one and go back to that one so you don't want to do that you just you have to do from top to down you want to choose the first one device if this device goes down go to the next one this is what I want to do so this is I want to choose top down so just I add that so that's good so now save click and save so that's good now I have another one here if you want to if you want to add another one for PSTN just click on add new here and this is a PSTN devices 
top and down the dpstn it's this is the gateway for pstn but in the real time it's not exist here but just to imagine it so i want to add like this and save and if you go back you will see two routing group here is the pstn and this is the device but why this is added the second one no problem about that so now so now we added this pstn devices and one devices the second one we are going to a route list so we added a route group and we are going to the route list here find we don't have anyone so add a new one the first one is this is the list it's called my route to 5xxx so this is the destination which is the destination for 5010 so that's good now this is the name and this is unified communication manager group is default click on save now i have i want to choose here is two route list configuration one for one and the another one for pstn so the first one i want to add it just add routing group like this and the routing group here it is the one devices look at this now it's good cisco unified calling party and call party here is now i don't want to talk about because it is for pstn so just i want to take it briefly about that just imagine here you want to to call from 2xx x to the one from sorry what is that from 2 to xx to the one xxx so here is you don't know or you don't have to add extra number but if you want to call from 2xx to the 1xx through pstn you have to add something called a new extension number something called calling party transform mask and you have to know a prefix digits for outgoing calls just but here is i don't want to configure it just click on save a setting route list about the save you must reset the route list okay so now i want to add a new route for pstn just like this this is the second one click on save okay now i want to add to make a reset here is the reset i did it so that's good now we added two route lists. the first one it will use if this goes down the pstn will take over the action so this is our step so if you go there you will see this device if this route list goes down it will go to the route list another route list for pstn so we did the route list now we are going to do the route pattern go to the route calling route menu route hunt the last one is route pattern here look at this now route pattern now click find i don't see anyone so add a new here is the route pattern here the destination it will be 5010 this is it will work but it is for just one extension but what i can do if i want to make for 5020 maybe or 5001 so this is it's not applicable so you have to choose a wildcard mask wildcard like this xxx so that's mean x it's a single digit from zero to nine and also there is another way also to do this you can do that like this five zero bracket look at this from zero to one bracket x what does that mean that's mean i want to dial five zero from zero to one just zero and one or you can do like this from zero to ten from zero to ten five zero 
which is 5010, 5010010, like this. But you have to pay attention that the digits inside between two brackets, just one digit, just one digit. If you see like this, uh -huh, 10, what does that mean? Does that mean 50, 10, and X? No. This is just one digit. That's mean 1 or 0. 1 or 0. So imagine that there is a comma between them, but it's not acceptable to make a comma. It will give me a message error. Error message if I did that. So I don't want to make a comma. Just if you see like this, 1, 0, or 10, that means 1 or 0. So that's very important to know. But here I want to choose a wild card like XXX. Here is I want to choose the gateway route list. I have one. This is route to the five XXX. Now look at this. Something called call classification. I have something called off net and on net. Provide outside the L2. And here is I don't want to provide outside the L2 because this is for PSTN. So I don't want to check it. Just now it will go back to the on net. If this is for H323 gateway for one yes so now just like this I want just to make save okay it will reset by default automatically that's good it will take a time but no problem Okay, now am I ready? Let's see. Can I make a call from this extension to this extension? Let's see. I want to go there. But before that, I want to make sure if I can. So now let's see. Can I go make ping there? Close that just. Close it, close everything because it will take a lot of memory, physical memory, so I don't want that. So now I want to go there and make a ring to 5010. Let's see, go this. Yes, I can make a ring there. Look at this, I have. Yes, I have a calling from 2002. So that's good. So int call. Now, can I make a calling from 5010 to the 2002? Just let me see. I didn't yet because I didn't make a dial pair inside the CME. Here's, forget that. I didn't do this. So now we are going to configure a dial peer here. So now go conf t dial dial peer voice 2000 to reach the 2000 and voice over IP here. The destination pattern here is two point dot dot dot, which is two zero zero two. And the session target here, the IB version 4. Here's the session target, it will be the IB address of CUCM. So here is 192.168.10.11. So is that enough? Let's see. We are going also to make interface fast Ethernet 00. We are going to enable this fast Ethernet to be work with H323 gateway. So H323 gateway voice interface. We enable it and we are going to make a bind with the source address 192.168.20.1. This is the ID address for fast Ethernet 0, 0. I think now we are ready. So now, 
let's see can I go there go to the and make a call to the two two zero zero two is there anything here yes now I can have a call from five zero one zero it's calling now to ring out so that's good so it called so we did this we made the 2002 and 5010 extensions to be able to call with each other so now that was that our scenario we have two cluster here cluster number one and two the cluster number one there work with cucm and the cluster two it works with cme call manager express we made the 2002 to be able to call to 5010 and also vice versa uh, we talked about the ci how how can how cisco ip phones connect with each other and how cocm deal with gateway and we talked about how cocm handles the number we talked about a hierarchy model for cocm and we talked about the h323 gateway which is h225 protocol and the next uh, tutorial shallow we are we are going to do this by sip protocol so that was that in this tutorial and i hope this tutorial will be beneficial for everyone wants to know about the cocm and how to communicate between remotely between cipc phone or soft phone so that was everything now i hope to see you again in the next video inshallah so until that moment so bye bye